To paint trees correctly, the easiest method is to sketch out the tree skeleton and then place the needles or leaves around the branches and twigs. In my last video, I showed you how to approach this topic using the scribble method. And today I want to show you how I do it with watercolors. But this would also work in a similar way with acrylic paints. Hello and welcome back to Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany and I also have two assistants and they are called Pedro and Rosa. And now, without further ado, let's have a look how to paint trees. I will do the preliminary drawing with a 4B so that you can see what I'm doing, but if it were my own drawing, I would use the much lighter HB. As a painting surface, I use very simple watercolor paper. Then I have three brushes, a number 16, a number 12 and a number 6. And when it comes to colors, I usually mix my greens from cadmium yellow or lemon yellow and a cool shade of blue like Parisian blue or Prussian blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. For the trunks I also use ultramarine blue and cadmium orange or cadmium red. I'm going to start with a conifer. However, we are not trying to paint everything botanically correctly, but rather we are concentrating on a few key characteristics that are similar in many conifers. For example, spruces and fir trees are built in such a way that you have a slender trunk in the middle from which the branches and twigs usually extend in four directions. At the top they grow upwards, but the further down they go, the heavier the load of the needles becomes and the more they sag downwards. And this is how you get the typical Christmas tree shape. It's important that we also indicate the branches that grow forward, even if you can only see them in a foreshortened perspective. Then I mix a dark green from Prussian blue and burnt sienna. And in spring, you could also add a little cadmium yellow because the young shoots make the trees a little lighter. With spruces and firs, the small branches grow downwards and I now draw them with my brush very loosely, making sure that the small branches are of different lengths. In the middle, where the branches also grow forward, I simply dab another slightly darker layer into the wet paint. And now everything has to dry before I create small side branches and increase the shadows along the trunk. If I want to achieve a light and shadow effect, I can of course make one side a little darker overall and put a shadow under my tree.
My second tree is a silver birch tree. Here too, we usually have a slender trunk in the middle. Sometimes you can also have two trunks from which the thin branches grow irregularly upwards or sideways. And here it is important that the branches grow very irregularly off the trunk. And very thin branches grow from these, which are pulled downwards by the weight of the leaves. And here too I work in a very graphic way. I first mix a very light green from lemon yellow and Prussian blue and mark the small leaves of the birch with small and large spots. On the shadow side I mix a darker color by using more blue and a little bit of burnt sienna. And now before I draw the trunk and branches, the foliage must be dry. For the dark areas on the bark, I mix ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and highlight them with small spots. In the tree, the trunk only appears in a few places. And I also only indicate the branches and twigs with dark lines. Be careful not to make these lines everywhere. And finally, I paint very small leaves on the tips using a very light green on the light side and a strong green on the shadow side. To give the impression of leaves in the background, I simply paint bluish spots between my branches. Here too, I can give the tree a shadow, but be careful, it has to be very narrow uh, along the trunk because the treetop only casts a shadow a little further away. The next tree is a pine tree. Here too, we try to emphasize the typical features. And again we have a slender trunk from which the branches grow in all directions. The typical thing here is that the needles grow on top of the branches and the twigs and the large branches only have few needles along the trunk. Only at the top, where the branches are shorter, do they become more dense. And painting here works in a very similar way to the spruce. I mix a dark green again and outline the needles with short strokes. And I make sure that the needles are of different sizes and that they appear denser along the trunk. When my first layer is dry, I mix a reddish brown using uh, burnt sienna and a little cadmium orange and blue. And I paint the trunk and the large branches. And finally, I use a fine brush to highlight individual needles or very small twigs. And again, to indicate the branches in the back, I simply add a little blue along the trunk. 
The shadow under the tree is mostly limited to the trunk. I would only vaguely indicate the crown because normally you won't really see it. The last tree is a typical deciduous tree that has multiple branches from the trunk. I draw the main branches as well as some of the small branch branches that reach to the end of the later tree silhouette. And I now roughly draw my foliage around these branches so that I get an irregular outline. And this time I use a large brush, the number 16, to add large patches of different light greens to indicate the tufts of foliage. I dab a darker green in the shadows below and on the shadow side. And here I have to make sure that I leave the trunk and some of the branches visible in some places. And I paint the trunk again with a dark brown and also outline some branches and small twigs. Now, once my first layer has dried, I can add smaller patches over the foliage to suggest a variety of leaves. If I give the tree a shadow, it starts relatively close to the trunk, depending on where my light is coming from. And you will also have the shadow on the lighter side of the tree. Now these four main forms that I just showed you can be varied again and again in a landscape painting. So it's actually enough if you master these four types. Bushes, for example, can easily be painted like a deciduous tree without a trunk. As a conclusion, I will now show you some landscape paintings where you can see that these tree shapes not only work with watercolor, but also with all other painting media. And this is all from me for today. As usual, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I surely hope to see you again next time. Until then, have a good time. See you soon.